Welcome to the Stonewall Jackson House, the only home ever owned by the famous Confederate General Thomas Jonathan Jackson, better known to many of you as Stonewall. Jackson lived here with his second wife, Mary Anna Morrison Jackson, immediately before the outbreak of the American Civil War in 1861. The house, which is owned and operated by the Stonewall Jackson Foundation, has been restored to appear as it did when the Jacksons lived here, and is furnished with many of the Jacksons' own possessions. Thomas Jackson moved to Lexington in 1851 to teach at the Virginia Military Institute. During his early years in town, he lived in bachelor quarters at the Institute or in a hotel. After his marriage to Eleanor Junkin, the daughter of the president of Washington College, Jackson lived with his in-laws on the campus of the college. Only after the death of his first wife and his remarriage did Jackson establish his home here on Washington Street. During his decade in Lexington, he lived the quiet life of a college professor and was known simply as Thomas or Major Jackson the rank he held with the Virginia Militia as a faculty member at the Institute. We might never have heard of him if it had not been for the outbreak of the war. T.J. Jackson became famous for his leadership of Southern troops during the Civil War, and especially for his many victories during the Valley Campaign of 1862. But it was at the Battle of First Manassas, or Bull Run, in July 1861, he received the nickname Stonewall. Visitors to Major and Mrs. Jackson's home in the mid-19th century would have climbed the outside stairs to the front porch and entered through this door into the entry hall, or passage, on the main floor. The inventory of household effects made after Jackson's death in 1863 for purposes of settling his estate listed three items that were located in the hall, a passage lamp, a passage oiled carpet, and a hat rack. The passage lamp is a candle-burning tin lamp dated from the 1850s. This hat rack, in the Gothic style, popular in the 1840s and 1850s, came from a Rockbridge County home which belonged to one of Mrs. Jackson's cousins. One of the items on the hat rack is Thomas Jackson's walking stick, which was probably a souvenir of his trip to England in 1856. The floor covering is an oiled passage carpet. This type of carpet was a forerunner of linoleum and today's vinyl floor coverings. It was made out of canvas, which was painted with oil paints in a geometric pattern and then was given numerous coats of varnish for protection. This small room, painted in a fawn color, popular in the 1850s, was Major Thomas Jonathan Jackson's study. The second front door, which you see in this room, was probably added by the previous owner, Dr. Archibald Graham, as an entrance to his office. Jackson's estate inventory included a pair of transparent blinds, whose value suggests they may have been fancy painted window shades such as these. The inventory also included 40 yards of grass matting, which was a popular summer floor covering. For 10 years, from 1851 to 1861, Thomas Jackson was professor of natural philosophy, what we would call physics, at the Virginia Military Institute. In this room, he carefully prepared for his classes each day. Jackson was a conscientious professor and a strict teacher who expected the same kind of self-discipline of his students that he demanded of himself. Jackson stood up to study and read in order to improve his digestion and ease the discomfort associated with dyspepsia, which plagued him through much of his adult life. According to Mrs. Jackson, Major Jackson had a high desk made to order upon which he kept his papers and books. 
Jackson owned a personal library on such subjects as history, classics, religion, and languages. The Jackson House Collection includes Jackson's diploma from the United States Military Academy at West Point. Orphaned at an early age, Jackson was very fortunate to attend West Point, and he valued the opportunity which a college education provided him to better himself. Jackson graduated from West Point in 1846 at the age of 22, and from there went to Mexico where he distinguished himself through bravery under fire during the Mexican War. From this room, Jackson probably also conducted his business affairs. Although never a wealthy man, Jackson saved his salary, invested carefully in stocks, land, and slaves, and was a partner in the local tannery. As a result of this careful management of his resources, he was able to provide a comfortable home for his family. The parlor, with its handsome sofa and matching armchair, was probably the most fashionably furnished room in the house. Here, Major and Mrs. Jackson entertained their friends. The Jacksons traveled north every summer, visiting cities such as New York, Baltimore, and Philadelphia, as well as water cure resorts and spas such as Saratoga Springs, New York, and Round Hill, Massachusetts. On these trips, they purchased much of the furniture in their new home, such as a center table and a set of six mahogany chairs. Mrs. Jackson commented that the furniture was very plain, though of excellent materials, but simplicity itself marked every article. To preserve his eyesight, Jackson preferred not to read by artificial light. In the evening, he reviewed the lessons he planned to teach the next day, without referring to a book. He had a custom of placing a chair with his face to the wall and remain in that position until he had finished his time of mental study. Then he would turn back to engage in conversation. Jackson's estate inventory indicated the presence of two parlor stoves, one of which was almost certainly used in this room. The Jackson's piano, which was valued at $500 on the inventory, was among their most expensive possessions. Jackson enjoyed listening to his wife play, although he was said to have been tone deaf. The pair of chromolithographs depicting sentimental family scenes belonged to the Jacksons. Although Jackson was fond of children, he and Mrs. Jackson did not have any children while they lived in this house. Julia, their only child to survive infancy, was born during the Civil War. Jackson saw her only twice before his death in 1863. Those of you who are familiar with Jackson's military career may find that the comfort of his home provides a sharp contrast to the austerity of his life during the war. Jackson took great interest in the details of furnishing this house and enjoyed the sense of order and contentment which he found here. We think this small room was used as a storage closet for housekeeping items. Linens did not appear on Jackson's estate inventory, perhaps because they were considered Mrs. Jackson's property. The trunks in this closet are reminders of the extensive traveling the Jacksons did every summer. Since the railroad did not come to Lexington until much later, the first part of each journey would be by carriage or canal boat. As part of his belief in hydropathy, or the water cure, Jackson took a cold bath every morning. The tub stored in this room is a 19th century bathtub which was used here in Lexington. In addition to the bathing tub and apparatus listed in the inventory, Jackson also had a foot tub, probably similar to this one. Jackson also believed in the health benefits of exercise. Mrs. Jackson noted in her memoirs 
that her husband had gymnastic equipment which he used for exercises. It was not unusual in the 19th century for the master bedroom to be located on the main floor, with other bedrooms located on the upper floor. Since the Jacksons had no children while they were living in this house, the top floor was used only for guest rooms and storage space. The commode and the chamber set, including a wash bowl and a pitcher, remind us that before the Civil War, most Americans did not have separate bathing rooms. The outhouse, or privy, such as the one now located at the end of the garden, was the main facility for sanitation. The reproduction uniform is a copy of the one Jackson wore as a major in the Virginia militia while on the faculty at the Virginia Military Institute. This uniform is virtually identical to its standard U.S. Army uniform of the same period, except for the buttons. Letters between Jackson and his sister Laura indicate that the Jacksons purchased their high bed in Philadelphia. The soft beige color of the walls was considered appropriate for a bedroom. The stove is a period stove manufactured by the Baltimore Stove Works. According to Junkin family tradition, the rosewood bureau and matching washstand belonged to Jackson and his first wife, Eleanor Junkin Jackson. Fourteen months after their marriage, she died in childbirth along with their infant son. Nearly three years after Ellie's death, Jackson married Mary Anna Morrison, whom he called Anna. Their first child died in infancy, the spring before they moved into this house. The dining room was central to the daily routine of the Jackson household. Here, the Jacksons gathered for meals and family prayer. Morning prayers were held promptly at seven o'clock. Every member of the household, including slaves, was expected to attend. Breakfast for family members and guests followed morning prayer. An extension table, a green sofa, and a Scotch ingrain carpet were listed on the 1863 estate inventory and were likely used in this room. The Jackson's granddaughter, who lived until 1991, recalled that her grandmother Jackson always kept a sofa in the dining room. Thomas Jackson, who had been baptized as an Episcopalian, joined the Lexington Presbyterian Church a few months after he arrived in Lexington and became one of the most active members of the congregation. Jackson's strong religious faith became increasingly evident throughout his years in Lexington and sustained him through the difficult years of the Civil War. Like many Virginians, Thomas Jackson was, as he put it in a letter, very strong for the Union. But when the rift between the southern states and the northern states came, Jackson believed that his greatest allegiance lay with his home state. He left Lexington in April 1861 and did not return alive. He was accidentally wounded by his own men on the evening of May 2, 1863, following the Battle of Chancellorsville, and his left arm was amputated in an effort to save his life. He died of pneumonia eight days later. Jackson's body was brought back to Lexington by train and canal boat. His remains lay in state in his old classroom at the Virginia Military Institute. He was buried in the family plot in the cemetery on South Main Street. His grave was marked with a simple headstone erected by his widow, Mary Anna Morrison Jackson. Thirty years after Thomas Jonathan Jackson left Lexington, a group of Confederate veterans, many of whom had served with Jackson, succeeded in raising enough money to have a monument erected in his memory in the cemetery. It is a heroic-sized bronze statue which shows Jackson as his soldiers might have remembered him. After Jackson's death, Mrs. Jackson and their daughter Julia 
never came back to live in Lexington. Mrs. Jackson kept this house as a rental property until early in the 20th century when it was purchased by the United Daughters of the Confederacy and turned into the Stonewall Jackson Memorial Hospital. It was the only hospital serving this community until 1954 when the hospital moved to its current location and this building became a museum. If you have any questions about Jackson, the house, or anything that was shown or mentioned in this video tour, please ask a guide or a member of the museum shop staff. We hope that you have enjoyed your visit to the Stonewall Jackson House.